Estelle Sylvia Pankhurst, the 5th of May 1882 to the 27th of September 1960, was an English campaigner for the suffragette movement, a prominent left communist and later an activist in the cause of anti-fascism. She spent much of her later life agitating on behalf of Ethiopia, where she eventually moved. Topic: Early life. Estelle Sylvia Pankhurst she later dropped her first forename was born at Drayton Terrace, Old Trafford, Manchester, a daughter of Richard Pankhurst and Emmeline Pankhurst, who both later became founding members of the Independent Labour Party and were much concerned with women's rights. Sylvia and her sisters, Christabel and Adela, attended Manchester High School for Girls, and all three became suffragists. Sylvia Pankhurst trained as an artist at the Manchester School of Art, and, in 1900, won a scholarship to the Royal College of Art in South Kensington, London. Suffragism In 1906, Sylvia Pankhurst started to work full-time for the Women's Social and Political Union with her sister Christabel and their mother. She applied her artistic talents on behalf of the WSPU, devising its logo and various leaflets, banners, and posters as well as the decoration of its meeting halls. In 1907 she toured industrial towns in England and Scotland, painting portraits of working-class women in their working environments. She spent time in Leicester where she was welcomed by Alice Hawkins who she knew through the Independent Labour Party. They were soon joined by Mary Gawthorpe and they established a WSPU presence in Leicester. In contrast to Emmeline and Christabel, Sylvia retained an affiliation with the labor movement and concentrated her activity on local campaigning. She and Amy Bull founded the East London Federation of the WSPU. Sylvia also contributed articles to the WSPU's newspaper, Votes for Women and, in 1911, she published a propagandist history of the WSPU's campaign, The Suffragette, the history of the women's militant suffrage movement. Like many suffragists she spent time in prison, being arrested on numerous occasions whilst campaigning for the rights of women. Sylvia was aged 24 when she went to prison for the first time. During the period between February 1913 and July 1914 Sylvia Pankhurst, was arrested eight times, each time being repeatedly force-fed. She gave several accounts of her experience of force-feeding and time in prison. One such account was written for an American publication called McClure's Magazine in 1913. By 1914, Sylvia had many disagreements with the route the WSPU was taking. It had become independent of any political party, but she wanted it to become an explicitly socialist organization tackling wider issues than women's suffrage, and aligned with the independent Labour Party. She had a close personal relationship with the Labour politician Keir Hardy. On 1 November 1913, Pankhurst showed her support in the Dublin lockout and spoke at a meeting in London. The members of the WSPU, particularly her sister Christabel, did not agree with her actions, and consequently expelled her from the Union. Her expulsion led to her founding of the East London Federation of Suffragettes in 1914 which over the years evolved politically and changed its name accordingly, first to the Women's Suffrage Federation and then to the Workers' Socialist Federation. She founded the newspaper of the WSF, Women's Dreadnought, which subsequently became the Workers' Dreadnought. The Federation campaigned against the First World War and some of its members hid conscientious objectors from the police. <laughs> First World War During the First World War Sylvia Pankhurst was horrified to see her mother Emmeline and her sister Christabel become enthusiastic supporters of the war drive and campaign in favor of military conscription. She was opposed to the war, and was publicly attacked in the newly renamed WSPU newspaper Britannia. Her organization attempted to defend the interests of women in the poorer parts of London. It set up cost price restaurants to feed the hungry without the taint of charity. It also established a toy factory to give work to women who had become unemployed because of the war. She and her comrades also worked to defend the right of soldiers' wives to decent allowances while their husbands were away, both practically, by setting up legal advice centers, and politically, by running campaigns to oblige the government to take into account the poverty of soldiers' wives. In 1915, Pankhurst gave her enthusiastic support to the International Women's Peace Congress, held at The Hague. 
This support lost her some of her allies at home and contrasted sharply with the stance of her sister Christabel, who, following the Russian Revolution of February 1917 and Alexander Kerensky's rise to power, journeyed to Russia to advocate against its withdrawal from the war. Communism The WSF continued to move towards left-wing politics and hosted the inaugural meeting of the Communist Party BSTI. Workers Dreadnought published Sylvia Pankhurst's A Constitution for British Soviets to coincide with this meeting. In this article she highlighted the potential role of what she called household Soviets in order that mothers and those who are organizers of the family life of the community may be adequately represented, and may take their due part in the management of society, a system of household Soviets shall be built up." The CP BSTI was opposed to parliamentarism, in contrast to the views of the newly founded British Socialist Party which formed the Communist Party of Great Britain CPGB in August 1920. The CP BSTI soon dissolved itself into the larger, official Communist Party, but this unity was short-lived. When the leadership of the CPGB proposed that Pankhurst hand over the workers' dreadnought to the party she revolted. As a result she was expelled from the CPGB and moved to found the short-lived Communist Workers' Party. By this time she was an adherent of left or council communism. She attended meetings of the Communist International in Russia and Amsterdam, and those of the Italian Socialist Party. She disagreed with Lenin on his advice to work with the British Labour Party and was supportive of left communists, such as Anton Topic: <laughs> Partner and son Pankhurst objected to entering into a marriage contract and taking a husband's name. Near the end of the First World War she began living with Italian anarchist Silvio Corio and moved to Woodford Green, where she lived for over 30 years. A blue plaque in Pankhurst Green opposite Woodford Tube Station commemorate her ties to the area. In 1927, at the age of 45, she gave birth to a son, Richard. As she refused to marry the child's father, her mother broke ties with her and did not speak to her again. Topic. Supporter of Ethiopia In the early 1930s Pankhurst drifted away from communist politics but remained involved in movements connected with anti-fascism and anti-colonialism. In 1932 she was instrumental in the establishment of the Socialist Workers' National Health Council. She responded to the Italian invasion of Ethiopia by publishing the New Times and Ethiopia News from 1936, and became a supporter of Haile Selassie. She raised funds for Ethiopia's first teaching hospital, and wrote extensively on Ethiopian art and culture, carrying out research that was published in her book Ethiopia, A Cultural History London, Lollibella House, 1955, from 1936 MI5 monitored Pankhurst's correspondence. In 1940 she wrote to Viscount Swinton, then chairing a committee investigating fifth columnists, and enclosed lists of active fascists still at large and of anti-fascists who had been interned. A copy of this letter on MI5's file carries a note in Swinton's hand reading, I should think a most doubtful source of information. After the post-war liberation of Ethiopia she became a strong supporter of union between Ethiopia and the former Italian Somaliland, and MI5 continued to follow her activities. In 1948 MI5 considered strategies for muzzling the tiresome Miss Sylvia Pankhurst. Pankhurst became a friend and advisor to the Ethiopian Emperor Haile Selassie, and in 1956 she moved to Addis Ababa with her son Richard at Haile Selassie's invitation. She then founded a monthly journal, Ethiopia Observer, in which she reported on many aspects of Ethiopian life and development. Topic death and posthumous recognition Pankhurst died in Addis Ababa in 1960, aged 78, and received a full state funeral at which Haile Selassie named her an honorary Ethiopian. She is the only foreigner buried in front of Holy Trinity Cathedral in Addis Ababa, in a section reserved for patriots of the Italian War. Her name and picture and those of 58 other women's suffrage supporters are on the plinth of the statue of Millicent Fawcett in Parliament Square, London, unveiled in 2018, whilst a musical on her life entitled Sylvia premiered at the Old Vic in September the same year. 
Topic writings Selection The Suffragette, The History of the Women's Militant Suffrage Movement, London, Gay and Hancock 1911, The Home Front 1932, reissued 1987 by the Crescent Library ISBN 0-09-172911 4 Soviet Russia as I Saw It, Workers' Dreadnought the 16th of April 1921. The Suffragette Movement, An Intimate Account of Persons and Ideals 1931, reissued 1984 by Chateau and Windus a Sylvia Pankhurst reader, ed. by Catherine Dodd, Manchester University Press 1993 Non-Leninist Marxism, Writings on the Workers' Councils includes Pankhurst's Communism and Its Tactics, St. Petersburg, Florida, Red and Black Publishers 2007 ISBN 978-0-9791813-6-8 Delphos or the Future of International Language London, Keegan Paul, Trench, Trubner & Co., 1920s Education of the Masses, The Dreadnought Publishers, 1918 E. Sylvia Pankhurst, Portrait of a Radical, London, Yale University Press, 1987 Topic Secondary literature Richard Pankhurst, Sylvia Pankhurst, Artist and Crusader, An Intimate Portrait Virago Limited, 1979, ISBN 0-448-22840-8 Richard Pankhurst, Sylvia Pankhurst, Council for Ethiopia, Hollywood, CA, Sahai, 2003, London, Global Publishing, ISBN 0972317228, Ian Bullock and Richard Pankhurst, eds, Sylvia Pankhurst, From Artist to Antifascist, Macmillan, 1992. ISBN 0-333-54618-0 Shirley Harrison, Sylvia Pankhurst, A Crusading Life 1882-1960 Orem Press, 2003. ISBN 1854109057 Sylvia Pankhurst, The Rebellious Suffragette, Golden Guides Press Limited, 2012. ISBN 1780950187 Shirley Harrison, Sylvia Pankhurst, Citizen of the World Hornbeam Publishing Limited, 2009, ISBN 978-0-9553963-2-8 Barbara Castle, Sylvia and Christabel Pankhurst Penguin Books, 1987, ISBN 0-14-008761-3 Martin Pugh, The Pankhursts, The History of One Radical Family Penguin Books, 2002. ISBN 0099520435 Patricia W. Romero, E. Sylvia Pankhurst. Portrait of a Radical New Haven and London, Yale University Press, 1987. ISBN 0300036914 Barbara Winslow, Sylvia Pankhurst, Sexual Politics and Political Activism, New York, St. Martin's Press, 1996, ISBN 0-312-162685. Topic. See also. Anti-Air War Memorial. History of Feminism. List of Suffragists and Suffragettes. Sylvia Pankhurst artwork. Women's suffrage in the United Kingdom Pankhurst Center in Manchester Topic. References Topic. External links SylviaPankhurst.com, a comprehensive information resource about Sylvia Pankhurst from Hornbeam Publishing Limited, sponsored by the UK Heritage Lottery Fund Sylvia Pankhurst Biography, Spartacus-Educational.com, accessed 4 April 2014 Sylvia Pankhurst Archive, Libcom.org, accessed 4 April 2014 Archival material relating to Sylvia Pankhurst UK National Archives Estelle Sylvia Pankhurst Papers archived at the International Institute of Social History in Amsterdam Application for naturalization of Mrs. Margareta Morgenstern and her husband Erwin, including written plea from Pankhurst. Communism or reforms? At the Wayback Machine archived the 27th of October 2009, two articles by Pankhurst and Anton Panikok, first published in The Workers' Dreadnought in 1922, first published as a pamphlet in 1974 by Workers' Voice, a Liverpudlian communist group. Three pamphlets detailing the work of Sylvia Pankhurst as an anti-Bolshevik communist. Anti-parliamentarism and communism in Britain, 1917-1921. 
by R. F. Jones, Anti-Parliamentary Communism, The Movement for Workers' Councils in Britain, Class War on the Home Front Sylvia Pankhurst, Everything is Possible, a documentary that chronicles the life and political campaigns of Sylvia Pankhurst and includes an exclusive interview with her son Richard Pankhurst and his wife Rita. The accompanying website includes images of a large number of security files held on Pankhurst, from the collection at the National Archives. Profile, nrs.harvard.edu, accessed 4 April 2014 Profile, Radcliffe, Harvard. Adu Schlesinger Library, Radcliffe Institute, Harvard University. I was forcibly fed by Sylvia Pankhurst, McClure's, August 1913.